tripped in a bear. Oh. <laughs> like, no, Ari, let me get serious. Let me get serious. Sorry, I'm starting to do it. And sorry, I'm doing in a bear suit for a Lolita vlog. But we're having a little bit of trouble with um, some of my custom outfits because I have officially lost 42 pounds. And. My stuff isn't fitting good, which is not making me happy. So instead of me getting all frustrated and wanting to stab <laughs> that I got to figure out what the fuck to do with my Lolita stuff, I was like, you know what? I don't feel like fussing. I'm going to put on my bear suit that I got for Christmas. So I'm going to be a bear <laughs> for this particular Lolita vlog. <laughs> and I apologize if you were expecting to see something different. But I don't know what to tell you. So, okay. Um... Oh, and also before I start, if I didn't say thank you for the happy birthday greetings last week, thank you so much. I had a really nice birthday. Um, my husband spent two days with me because I was in a resort at St. Petersburg at the beach area. So I was at a resort called Tree Winds. That's where I was last week. So I'm home again. But okay, hush up, computer. But um, um, if I didn't say thank you for the birthday wishes, thank you so much. That that really meant a lot to me and I know I don't get a lot of hits and views and stuff but I was just kind of happy that I got like 50 something views on that video so thanks and a lot of y'all were like wow we didn't know you were like like 40 I'm like yeah, yeah uh -huh. kind of old so but let's get started with the Lolita vlog okay and we gotta start again sad sad tragic news happening um Tokyo Rebel and um Baby to Star Shine Bright New York have decided they were going to shut it down and they're closing up their doors and everybody once again is left with the $64 billion question of is this truly the heralding cry of the end of Lolita and I know a lot of y'all are like watch on you said if baby closed their doors we were all going to have to pack it the fuck up and go home we're not there yet I promise we're not there yet what I mean is if all the stores collectively, all the babies, all the APs, they all just are packing it up and they're like, we can't do no more. And then they're, they're leaving. Um, it's the spot in New York that's closing. As far as I know, the baby to star shine bright in, um, San Francisco, which I've been to a couple of times. Um, cause my best friend lives in California and when I go to visit her, which I haven't been, been to visit her since 2012. But um, when I went to visit her, every time I go out there, which isn't a lot, I go, we go to Japantown and we go to the New People Building and in the New People Building is where Baby the Star Shine Bright is. Um, the one in New York is closing. I don't know why, probably if I had to put my finger on it, the business um, major that I used to be in me is telling me the rent in New York is probably astronomically high. I don't think people were coming in like every day to be purchasing Lolita stuff. I think if people came in there, they mostly came in for a novelty or for like a special occasion, but people weren't probably going in. They weren't probably getting the foot traffic that they were expecting to get. And the rent First, um, I'm sure a space. I don't know where in New York they were. I actually never had been to the baby in New York. But if it's in Manhattan or anywhere near Manhattan, fuck that. You playing you paying through the damn nose in rent. So they probably weren't getting the foot traffic to justify the rent and they were probably taking a bath on on that spot if they weren't getting like x amount of sales to keep them afloat for a month so they were probably just like we can't afford to have this here and you'll just have to go to california to get your stuff so it's sad it's tragic it is not the heralding cry for the end of lolita lolita's still hanging in there as stated previously you're just gonna have to figure out how to order online like how to and it's so much easier now than it was when i got into lolita it's like you had to know some motherfuckers that were going to japan back when i was into Lo, like early when i got into lolita in like 2002 2003 2000 you had to know somebody or really know your shit on the proxy ordering circuit 
Now you just order direct from, like, you can order direct from Metamorphosis, Innocent World, um, AP, and then you have a host of Taobao sites, and then you have, on top of those, you have the independent makers of Lolita, and you have, like, a lot of options, so it's not the end. It's just a store, or two stores, actually, closing. Um, so, like I said, I'm sure rent in Cal, uh, not in California, and, um, I'm thinking San Francisco, that's still California. I'm sure rent in, um, in New York is not cheap. I don't know where they were in New York, but the rent, I'm telling you, was probably through the roof. And that's probably more than likely why they closed. They weren't getting the foot traffic to justify having a physical store, so they had to close it down. Why we are sad, it's not the end of the game for Lolita. It's still hanging in there. So keep your chins up, people. It's just a setback so it's not the end so all right so with that being said and i'm just kind of like well damn i'm gonna what i really wanted to discuss today was frilly frilly flicks and i don't mean like movies like alice in wonderland or beauty and the beast or cinderella or um the fuck is that other movie everybody else says you have to watch it when you're a lolita Oh, Marie Antoinette. Um, these are, there's not that many of them, unfortunately. I'm talking about the end all to be all of Lolita Flicks, Kamikaze Girls. Um, I have this. I read the book. I read the manga, too. Um, I didn't read the entirety of the book. It was one of those books where it was good when I started it, but then I got to, like, the last two or three chapters, and I just got bored with it and stopped reading it. I do that sometimes. But I read the book, I read the manga, and I watched the movie. I watched the movie first. So I'm going to talk about this, but I'll talk about this last. I'll talk about Mr. Rococo, which is a short subject movie about a Lolita. It's kind of a, it's a comedy, and I read some of the complaints about it, because I'll post a link to it in the description, but there is, they do have it up on YouTube. But it's a short subject movie, and it's called Mr. Rococo. And then... There's some weird one that I found in my research, because um, the most of the movies that people talk about are kamikaze girls, and then they go into, like, other movies that are suitable for Lolitas, but I wanted Lolita movies, like, Lolitas in movies, so, and those were, the, and then, and this third one that I found is called Gothic Lolita Psycho, gonna talk about that one first, um, but hang on, I gotta get my tablet sorted, so hang on, give me a sec. Alright, so, the first movie that I'm going to talk about, oops, is some, it's some random, real random movie I found out of, like, the, the three that I have going. It's actually, like, two and a half since, um, Mr. Rococo is, um, short subject, but some weird random movie called Gothic and Lolita Psycho. According to IMDb, it's about a girl named Yuki dons gothic Lolita clothing and becomes a demon of vengeance after her mother is killed by assassins. I'll, I'll post a link. They have it on YouTube for rent for like, I think $3. I'll post the link to the trailer in the description but i think y'all would maybe be happier with the three dollars because i was i was thinking about renting it and then i had to think about it real hard and then i was like you know what i think i would be happier with the three dollars because like basically she's not even in gothic style lolita i don't know what the fuck this chick was wearing it, it was all like it's all fucked up is what it is and and it's not lolita it is pleather and I, I don't even know. So, I'll post the link to that, and, and you can watch the trailer and decide if you want to blow $3 uh, in, in, like, an hour and a half of your life <laughs> on some bullshit. But I, I wasn't I wasn't too kosher on that one. It's, it's some part where she has her parasol, and it's a gun, and she's, like, mowing people down with the parasol gun, while that would be fun to have, actually, I would rather have a parasol, parasol flamethrower. That would be much better to have. But, while that would be interesting to have a parasol gun, I'm just 
just like, what the fuck am I watching? Then it was some thing where she was twirling it and she had stabbed some dude with it and she was twirling it and all this blood and juice was going everywhere. It was just like, oh my God. I think I would be a lot happier with the three dollars that I have in my bank account than spending it on some gothic Lolita psycho. So, and then something about the actress that's playing the main girl who is Yuki, I guess. Yeah, Yuki. Um, it's funny because the the lead character in Mr. Rococo is named Yuri, and then that gothic Lolita psycho is Yuki. It's weird, but whatever. Um, but the woman who's playing the, the Yuki girl, something about, she had, was voted in Japan of having the nicest ass in 2010. What are we doing with our lives here? So, I don't, I don't know. Y'all can check it out. I will post links to, to whatever y'all feel like y'all need to take a look at, but I wasn't watching that, because I'd have been happier with the cash, and no. Nah. So... I don't even know. Ugh. Like Lolita. No. So why don't we move on to Mr. Rococo, which I have on pause currently. Because I was like, I forgot what the main character girl in Mr. Rococo is. Now, as stated, Mr. Rococo is a short subject um, movie. Hang on. How long is it? I think it's only like 15, 20 minutes in... It's about a girl named Yuki, not Yuki, Yori. <laughs> I told you that I was going to get that confused. But Yori is a young girl who is deeply into Baby the Star Shine Bright. And she's into all things cute. And when she was a little kid, her parents, like, kind of, like, brainwashed her into liking super duper cute stuff. So she's walking around in her Baby the Star Shine Bright gear. And she sees this dude on at a playground on a chicken. And he's like, meow. And she falls in love. And that's her first boyfriend. But he breaks up with her in the middle of Baby the Star Shine Bright while she's trying on clothes because he likes tough girls. So she kind of resolves to become a tough girl herself. And at first she's like real weak. And then she meets some dude who I think is Australian. And um, he like gets her to toughen up. And then... She finds out that her ex-boyfriend now has met up with some wrestler girl, and she goes to be become a wrestler, and that's why, she, and that's her name, Mr. Rococo. And at the end, she fights and beats up the girlfriend, the new girlfriend, and um, her ex-boyfriend. And some of the comments for that were kind of weird. Like she changed to be with him, and. I don't get why she wanted to she wanted to be with him. She should have just had her dresses. It's like I don't think she changed to be with him. I think she wanted to try to change to try to be with him, but then she realized she was stronger than him and could basically kick his ass. <laughs> That's what I took from it. It's it's a really quirky and cute little movie. I liked it. I know a lot of people were complaining in the comments, but that's why we don't listen to them fools in the comments, because they don't know what they're talking about. So I say watch it. I think it's cute. Um, I found that eons ago. I, I had heard about it, and then I somebody had I saw they had it up on YouTube, and I was like, oh my god! So I watched it. So I will be posting a link to that in the description. Like I said, it's a short subject movie, so it shouldn't take you that long to breeze through, and you can use that as a precursor to moving on to Kamikaze Girls or. Shimasumo Monogatari is the Japanese title for Kamikaze Girls. Um, I like this movie. This is actually one of my favorite movies. I am, if you don't know, which you probably don't, I am exceedingly picky about the movies that I watch. I, I don't like going to the movies. I don't really like movies. So I am very picky about the shit that I sit and watch. This is actually one of my favorite, all-time favorite movies. And it's one of two chick flicks that I will admit to watching and liking. So, um, but basically, the girl at the top, um, Momoko, becomes friends with the girl at the bottom, um, Ichigo. Um, <laughs> Ichigo is a biker girl in their small little prefecture. Um, and she's like a Lolita, but she's kind of, um... Each, uh, Momoko is kind of really self-absorbed, self-possessed, 
and she doesn't really care about anything except getting anything, her clothes, her uh, Lolita clothes that make her happy. So she, her dad used to work for um the, I, I'm reluctant to say the Yakuza, but he worked for the Yakuza and he was designing fake clothes, like fake, they blurred out the name, but they, they were doing fake Versace. And then her dad decided that he wanted to um, do something called a double name, and double brands, and bring Universal and Versace together. And her father got really popular doing it. And they and they had to leave where they were living to go live in that small Shimotsumo um, prefecture, which is kind of like a town within, a, a, I think, a city. So... Um, that's how she met Ichigo. That's how Momoko met Ichigo because Ichigo wanted to buy a jacket for a wedding and she was selling some of her dad's leftover crap. And that's how they became friends. But at first, Momoko fought it tooth and she fought their friendship tooth and nail. She really didn't feel like being bothered. She couldn't even understand why she was trying to hang around her like that. And after a while, it's like, well, you just become friends with somebody. So, I love this movie. It's got a little bit of everything in it, for at least for me. So, it's got some crazy parts. It's got some parts where I was up there, like, tearing up. Don't tell nobody. But it's got a little bit of everything for everybody. And I, I love this movie. Um, It's a bit different than the book. Um... There's a part in the book that they, a part in the movie they leave out. Um, but basically, the the girl that's in the gang, Ichigo, she's with a group of biker girls. And it's, she, you know she has a crush on this one random biker dude who has, like, all his, like, pompadour shit going on. He looks like a unicorn. It's weird in the movie. Um, but he's also in the book and in the manga. What's not explained in the movie you just think she has a crush on this dude, and then she finds out, Ichigo finds out that that's her gang leader's boyfriend, and the gang leader's boyfriend, like, the gang leader lady is actually pregnant by him, and she's heartbroken over this in the movie. What's not explained, which is explained in the book, is Ichigo actually sleeps with that dude, and that's why she's heartbroken over it. It's not just that she lost out to her gang leader. It's that she slept with her gang leader's boyfriend and didn't know that was her boyfriend, and that's why she's heartbroken over it. So, I just figured I'd throw that out there. It wasn't. It's not in the movie. That actually would have made that a little bit more explainable, but I understand why they didn't go into it. So, but, yeah. So, those are my three Lolita flicks that are going around i would love to see more lolitas represented in movies and not just as like airheaded dippy bitches that is vacuous and oh yeah they like pretty things and like i mean and it's not to say that you know because i don't know but the only time i've ever seen a lolita represented in like on television was dumb shit like on TLC where people are just dippy and vacuous and oh I want to be a doll I just want to look like a doll yeah. so I don't know but I would like to see more Lolita related movies I mean I could go into Lolita related anime but the only one that I can call up or two I can call up off the top of my head is Ghost Sick and um Rosen Maiden um I've kind of fallen out with anime I'm Boy, I used to watch anything that was anime. Now I'm real, real picky. Last anime I watched was Classical Lloyd, and that was only because it had Mozart in it. So, I don't know what to tell you. But those are, like, the only Lolita movies I know of. If you know more, please feel free to tell me. And I don't mean, like I said, not to knock them. And I've seen Marie Antoinette. It's a good movie, but I like... You know, it's a good movie. It's not necessarily a Lolita movie because it's kind of smutty, but it's still good. Is um, Valmont. That is, that's my jam. Um, I guess another kind of Lolita movie, but it kind of falls out of it. It's just you watching stuff for the costumes is Orlando. It's weird, though. 
the the ending i never understood the ending of orlando it was a weird ass movie it's like some angel singing and and the woman's looking up i don't know what the fuck that was supposed to be so that's a good movie too it's just weird but yeah valmont y'all might want to check that out if y'all looking for smut and trash kind of like this sort of thing not that they promoting smut and trash but I'm saying it's kind of smutty it's got the girl that was in Return to Oz to, in it too so there's that so that's all I have for today and if you know of any actual movies where Lolita's are in it and not running around like a pack of dumbasses please hit me up let me know and I will scope them out but until then that is all I have and I will see y'all next time later